Stay Sane with Jane, the show that helps you and your business to thrive, not just survive. Tune in each week as Jane connects with guests in the wellness, business and publishing worlds, bringing you the most up-to-date training, techniques, healing and guidance for growth, mindset and motivation. Each session includes a magical guided meditation led by Jane or one of her special guests. Here's your host, Jane Scanlon. Hello and welcome to the 21st episode. And today we're going to be interviewing Anne Varney, um, who is an intrepid explorer of the mysteries of the human spirit. She's invested over £350,000 in travelling the world and training with world-renowned teachers and healers. She's an acclaimed international spirit teacher, spiritual teacher, a speaker and an author of three books. Um, And her specialities include shamanic energy healing, alchemy and quantum jumping. Welcome. So good to have you on. Great to be here. Great to be here. That sounds like, yeah, yeah, it's true. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. We have the right person on. Yeah. So mm-hmm. we met last year at um, uh, a, a women's in, women in business event. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and after hearing your story, I thought I have to get her on Stay Same with Jane and interview her because your life has been more than interesting. We could probably like make a, a, a movie out of it, couldn't we? True. <laughs> <laughs> Very true. And that's only a tiny bit of it you got to um, of of where I came, what, what I've done with my life and, and where I came from and all the rest of it. Yeah. Yeah. So tell us, tell us a little bit more about yourself. So, so basically, um, I had I, I was, had a multi six figure business uh, as an, an award winning bridal designer who I used to make um, and design and make outfits for celebrities, gentry, you know, all the the big names. It was high end uh, bridal I used to do, and also mother of the bride and uh, bridesmaids and special occasion wear and all the rest. And I also had my own label. Uh, and Barney Couture as well, and um, where I would go to China and design. And I also designed for international designers, travelled the world um, quite extensively with them, put on fashion shows at the Versace Hotel in, in the Gold Coast and uh, open air um, shows with international designers that I would uh, we create open air in Scotland. Everybody you see, you're off your head in Scotland. You know who does that? Um, so yeah, I've done. I've done a lot. Um, double page spreads, magazines, front page of OK, all that kind of stuff, and uh, burnt myself out. Totally burnt myself out because I was a single parent yeah. with two kids, and I also uh, and I had quite a few staff. And I also worked um, full time as a fashion lecturer as well. With all that, wow! Well, at universities, yeah, and uh, and um, looking after my parents. So I used to work very long hours, as you can imagine. You know, having a, a full time business, full time um, over a hundred students. I used to teach uh, all about fashion and patterns and design and um sewing and and making making them up and all the rest of it and uh, having two kids you know and um being a single parent uh, amongst that as well you know uh so i i actually uh, not burnt myself out once burnt myself out three times uh and listened the third time though i have to say but but, but the universe because... keeps on doesn't it it keeps on knocking yeah. knocking yeah. until you uh take heed so to speak yeah and then went and did a um uh i basically broke my foot i knew i had to do something in my life because i was fit i was we can imagine it was deadline after deadline after deadline you know that you, can, you can't keep that stress up and um so i knew there was 
that I needed to do something and, and um, I, I broke my foot quite badly actually when I went for my 40th birthday with a lot of people when I was called Dan Savage that I used to you know, <laughs> I love and, it. and all the rest of it and um, and it was when I broke my foot uh, obviously I, I couldn't drive I couldn't do I was very independent and I had to rely on other people it was very hard for me to do that to uh, rely on others and uh, my, my all my staff was spiritual so and i wasn't i mean i used to say they were off their heads you, you said no right you said you, 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 people are taking you for a ride you know are you, are you the things i used to say to them and they would just laugh at me but isn't it interesting that i actually picked people who are very spiritual either were reiki practitioners or light workers or and I said, what? 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 Very you're, interesting. Yes. The universe was calling these people yeah. in to surround you. Yeah. yeah massively. And um, so I, there was one of them had brought this book, Are You Psychic? by Dorothy Chitty. And I, I decided to, I'll, I'll take that for to read, not thinking anything of it. I'll just take it for reading. And there was a, a meditation. And I started doing this meditation. It took me a couple of weeks before I could get into this meditation because it's a really long meditation. And uh, I used to, because I, I couldn't sleep. I wasn't a good sleeper. Um, so I would wake at three in the morning and I'd meditate till seven, eight o'clock in the morning. And then I'd get up. Oh my work. gosh. That's... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I used to, yeah. have, and I would feel so refreshed. I would feel so much better because before I would just lie awake worrying. You know um about deadlines here and deadlines there and what have you so um it really did help uh but what i i would have this i was just speaking about this with a, with a client just saying actually and i'd have this little black book and i would write in this black book all these things i would get told about myself or um about uh, other people who i knew and i would just write in this book not thinking anything of it and i and i found the book oh, years later and every single thing in that book came true Wow. Everything. You know, That's, I remember writing yeah. down, you'll go to China in uh, 2012. And I remember when I was writing that, <laughs> you're a comedian now. You know? Yeah, I did. I went to China in 2012. You know, um, couldn't believe. I forgot about that. I wrote, you know, when, when, I, cause when I'm in the zone, I forget what I'm, what I'm writing. Oh, uh, yes. So, yeah. You know, you just it just doesn't go in. And uh, when I found the book and I, I read everything in it, I went, Jesus, what? So I went on a journey, you know, I went on a journey to, I knew there was something else there because uh, of mm -hmm. these, um, you know, I was getting these spirit guides coming in, power animals, all the, 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 what comes when you, when you uh, have deep meditations like that. And some of those meditations was, crossing over to the other side you know it was like you were touching the hand of god is what i'll um say even though i i, I'm, I don't believe in that figure of god if you know what i mean you know it's to me it's source of energy yes um, energy so, that flows through i would say that flows through every single thing and every single being yeah totally so um uh, uh and I just really uh, connected to that energy and my life started to change. You know, my, as we all hear, you know, once you connect to that energy, the things that don't serve you any longer, the people that don't serve you just just fall and, and drop off, you know, and that's exactly what happened. And um, and then I went to and did a 10-day trek. Well, it was actually a couple of weeks I was away for to Machu Picchu. I'd never did the doing the Inca Trail to Machu Picchu. Now, I couldn't even walk up the road. Never mind go and walk and hike up hills, you know. So, Some of those, I mean, those they're mountains with yeah, cliff yeah. drops off yeah. of them. Yeah. Beautiful though, absolutely yeah. beautiful. And uh, so that was a real struggle for me. I had to get a, myself a trainer and all the rest of it for to, to go and do that. And um, six weeks after me doing that, I shut everything down. Everything shut down. I basically, everything in that shop sold, you know, and uh, I so went. you closed and, your yeah, business, yeah. fashion business, everything. Yeah, just six weeks after. Uh, doing Masha Pichu because I had such a spiritual um, experience there. Yeah. 
that I knew when well, I was going around with this noose in, this imaginary noose around my neck, you know, for a couple of years going to work, thinking, oh, there has to be more than this, you know. And people would think that I was uh, inspired to be me because, you know, the, the because of what I achieved and and what have you. And yet, I absolutely hated the person I created. I didn't. I didn't. So you weren't in. You weren't finding joy within it anymore. And that that's the thing, isn't it? If we're <laughs> When we lose joy and fun and love within whatever work you're in, mm -hmm. it that that's when yeah. it's time to change or heal yeah. or you know that's mm -hmm. it's like the massive sign, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, massively. Uh, and then I realised. Um, so when I did that, I mean, don't get me wrong, it wasn't easy to do. You know, it wasn't easy at all. It was really, a, a, I remember my son, my oldest son coming into the, um, because, I, and, the, and the thing is, it, it, it was near bankruptcy. I allowed it to go to near bankruptcy, the business. Um, and my son came and I never told anybody. I never let any brides down because at that time, all the bridal uh, salons were, you kept, people were going to their shops to get their wedding dresses and the shop was shut. You know, um, but I never. Gosh, so it wasn't just your business; it was like a industry. Yeah, it was, an, was it, going it, on in the industry. Yeah, yeah. The, the industry, the the because the online wedding dresses came in and were closing businesses down left, right, and centre. Oh, um, yeah. And uh, but I but I never let anybody down. You know, I made sure that everybody, even a year later after them having uh, the shop shut, you know, they had their their dresses and all the rest of it. Um, and so basically what happened was, uh, I remember being in the kitchen a couple of days after it, it, it closed and my, my oldest son had came through and uh, says, because I never told anybody, you know, I never told anybody. I just says I was shutting it down because I was going to uh, re-educate myself and what have you. And he comes in and he go, and I just broke down, you know, he says, I, I didn't realise that it was how it was, you know, and I broke down and he turned around and says to me, it's good to see you're human, you know. And it was a real uh, oh, because I've been yeah. so many things up in the air, trying to be this strong, powerful, and you know, inspirational. Mm -hmm. You know, um, super superhuman, almost robotic. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. but there was no one there for me. Yeah, yeah. There was I was holding the balls up for everybody else, but there was no, nobody holding the balls up for me, basically. You know. Mm -hmm. but, um, and do you feel were you? Were you in a space to even allow someone yeah. to help you at that stage as well? Yeah, yeah, yeah. because that's what we we get into that, don't yeah. we? And then we don't, we're not accepting help. But we terribly need help, yeah. and it's yeah. just this awful um, cycle. Yeah. yeah, and my thing was vulnerability. You know, I, I would never allow myself vulnerable. You will see me vulnerable. I've got to be really yeah. strong, and I've got to, you know. Um, whereas I didn't realize vulnerability is was a strength. You know, I've seen it as a, weak, a big weakness. You know, yes. I was taught as a child. Um, never show vulnerability. So when, um, so I realized, then I went and retrained, uh, went and did a master's in child development and psychology at uh, uh, the university, Stirling University, and about killed myself because I had no background in psychology. I'd, I was a fashion designer. Yeah. <laughs> designer you know what I mean so um and there was quite a lot of people that actually left more uh the mature student yeah uh, they left in the first week no wonder but uh, no I stuck it out as I say but killed myself though um and then just went and retrained in meditation but and whilst in hypnotherapy advanced levels and succumb and so many others so many other things but whilst I was doing all that I was traveling the world uh, with real rimpinches in Nepal and uh, shamans in, in, in um, Peru and, you know, all these kind of places and, and, uh, and, and uh, what do you call them, Native Americans in, in the outbacks of California and what have you. Yeah. Just trying to heal myself more than anything as opposed to, if somebody said to me then that I would be a spiritual teacher, I would have just laughed at you. Mm. You were on your own healing 
journey yeah and by the sounds of it throughout your life you've had a thirst for learning anyway yeah is that right mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, yeah and yeah. knowledge and you like to keep busy yeah uh, yeah so I can see that that healing journey wouldn't be something that was just sort of sedentary and reading a few books no at yeah. home it'd be right let me I want to get my teeth into this yeah. I want to embody it I want to live it I want to breathe it yeah yeah and and also in sweat lodges and 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 I, and yeah. I was always given a lot of honors as well you know and um, because I was the grandmaster of uh, for a sweat lodge of taking the the because uh, it's an honorary position to be able to do that um, mm. to take the rocks into the sweat lodge for them you know I was uh, I was always given these kind of roles yeah. um, when I was on my and uh, staff and you know um, supporting the people um, with the teachers and, and what have you so I always had those kind of roles when I when I was doing that but I, I never ever seen my own power uh, potential um, yeah I was just doing it because I it was something that my soul yearned yeah yeah that's, that's fantastic um i really wanted to dive in on this um on this interview about your your offer i don't want to leave it till the last kind of second because the title is very very inviting so unlock abundance like uh -huh. by releasing ancestral curses, where throughout my own kind of healing journey, I've done a lot of healing uh -huh. lines, ancestral lines, inherited, etc. So can you, I, I'd love to hear like your journey through mm -hmm. releasing those uh, ancestral curses and where you learned this. I mean, it's, it's so fascinating yeah. and it's also something beautiful to watch when when you finally do it in your own life yeah. and then you really do see those ripple effects out yeah. into the rest of the family. Yeah, totally. And it does ripple effect out to the family. Yeah. yeah. Um, because um, when I was doing my trainings, um, they were, uh, we were, we were to actually go along the ancestral lines um, and, and it was something that was recurring in not just my life, but the um, the other people in my family's life. And, and the, the big thing at that time was I wouldn't allow anybody in to love me and I wouldn't allow myself to love anybody else. So I was mm. I was a single parent for like 20, 23, 24 years. I was a single parent. Uh, don't get me wrong, I had a very good life, you know. People think you're a single parent for all that time. Oh, what a shame. No, I had a, I travelled the world extensively. I had a really good life. Um, stressful life, but a good life as well. And um, so, but there was a thing around our female lineage that um, all, my mother was married four times and there weren't very good men that she married and uh, you know, there was always a, an, an abuse kind of thing. My mm -hmm. granny was the same. Her her auntie was the same. And my granny's granny was the same, you know. There was this yes. that, that was with love, same with myself, you know. So um, so they asked us to go and um, release the, the, the ancestral curse around the... Um, what it was that was recurring in the fam in the, the family lineage and so that was a big thing for the family so when we we goes into the um the spiritual realm um and and going along the timelines i just did this this morning actually with a client not for this thing but something similar it was actually around money and yeah the in her energy from start to finish was unbelievable um and basically, we go back to why that curse has been placed upon the timeline. You know, what is what is it? And, and it was because it was a past life and it was my the the um, my ancestral, you know, the female ancestral had stole someone's husband. On the the uh, way back, I think it was like 1300s or something like that. Yeah stole someone's husband and it was she'd stole the husband from 
a witch, and a, a, a black witch, and it was the black witch that had put the the curse on the full language, uh, the lineage of the rest of the women. Just on the women, it wasn't on the men. It was just on the women uh, that they would never find love. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. And so when I when I uh, released this this curse, the interesting thing that happened was. I found love and I'm still with my partner yet after eight years. Oh, that's lovely. Yeah, that's you. lovely. And do you have two sons? Two sons, yeah. So also, so you've got no daughters? No. No. So no. also you are like the end of that line yes. as well. You have no daughters. Yeah. You had, And then you got to... Yeah, finalize it and and stop it. Yeah, that's yeah. beautiful. Yeah. Interesting, isn't it? Brilliant. Like the the day with the with the money, um, the ancestral line around the, the with that is that um, you know there was a curse placed on by the mother, unknowingly. unknowingly yeah. You know, um, so it doesn't have to be someone else that puts it on. Remember, it can also yes. be the um the the actual the mother or the father or what have you yeah. even the cell can put curses on the cell yeah and that's that's just what i was going to say is that curses aren't just done by the dark witches yeah. we can do them on ourselves yeah. like right now in this lifetime yeah. can't we <laughs> it's those repeated patterns the repeated things we say to ourselves or about certain things yeah. Um, as as the you know you see some of those mem memes and it's um you know spelling words spelling yeah. it's called spelling for a reason because you are making spells with your words all the time massively uh, and people don't realise this you know they see a lot of people see curses oh it's a bad thing don't don't go near me you know um and what have you and it, as you say you know it, there's so many people are doing it to themselves i did it to myself as well you know yeah um we all do we all do yeah. and we just don't realize it and even if you've got an, an an adversity you know you've got an adverse your your nemesis as i call it you know you've got someone who really does uh you know triggers you and and really does the uh, and those bad words you're saying about that person, you're actually cursing that person. But not only are you cursing them, it's coming back to you as well. You know, the energy, the because en it's all energy. The energy is coming back to you. So be careful of what you're saying about other people too. Yeah. yeah. My but daughter has a um, a saying, something like, Gossip is like sand. Or gossip is like sand or glitter. Yeah. Once you sprinkle it, you can never get rid of it. Not 100%. Yeah. Is it like, oh, that's true. She's only yeah. 11. Yeah, true. <laughs> She's a wise, wise child. Yeah. But yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. It's, it's, and people don't realize that because they don't see what's as energy mm. of when you are speaking. You know, but that energy can come back and harm you. Yeah. Kat has come to say hello. <laughs> she doesn't, she, come here, girl. Go on, just go. <laughs> <laughs> but she, she loves to, to come over and see if she can do some healing on coals as well. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> So tell me, I know you've got, from all of your training all around the world, you've got lots of modalities. Oh, yeah. 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 So if we were to work together, what what would it look like? So there's a few ways that, that I, I work with people. So first of all, I have my um, Spiritual Awakening Academy membership. But it's very low cost because I find that a lot of healers have healer sickness, is what I call it, uh, and uh, which which is that they won't charge for the services. They they give everything away for free, uh, and I used to do that myself. You know, I would charge mm -hmm. thousands and thousands of pounds for a dress, but get me to charge for someone who I'm changing their life to just couldn't do it. Yeah, because it, it 
it wasn't palpable. I couldn't see it. Yes. Uh, and I think that it, it's really a, a it's a sickness that's in the healing um, world. It really is. I, I'm not like that now, but I really was when I first started. I, I really, I would do meditation classes, and I would, I would put soup on and beautiful breads and and all the rest, and I would charge a fiver. You know. <laughs> No, I usually suspect would just cover your costs. I wouldn't even cover my costs. I wouldn't even oh. cover my costs, you know. Yeah, it yeah. was terrible, terrible, because I just wanted to give, 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 give. And a lot of healers are like that, you know. That's If it's one aim I have in life, it's to change that, you know. Mm. that. So um, so I have it really low. It's only £27 a month, and you can cancel it in a time. But there's about 20-odd programmes are in there, you know, shamanic programs, angelic programs, alchemy, um, energy, uh, manifestation, uh, meditation, you know, M most things in the spiritual realm uh, is in there, a lot of shamanic stuff in there, and how to help um, not only heal yourself, but help others as practitioner programs in there as well, um, mm -hmm. shamanic and angelic, what have you. So we've got that. And then we have um, have my my high ticket uh, group um, programs where I take a small intimate number. Usually it's between six and eight that mm -hmm. I'll take through. Um, which one's a spiritual abundance creator? But only I only do it once or twice a year. And yeah. the spiritual alchemist that I'm just bringing back alive, uh, which starts on May the. 20th i'm sure i could be wrong about that yeah. here it's may the 20th uh around about then um whereas it's going to be a three-month program this time and uh, i did this about two and a half years ago and one of the girls who came on it she just couldn't afford it and uh brought start payment plans and um the, on week four she manifested 58 million pounds oh my uh, gosh amazing so, yeah it's a very powerful program just the way that we how we do it how i do it with people and again i take an intimate number so that i can really get because i'm working with their energy as mm -hmm. well as uh, showing them the processes and what they need to do to raise that energy to be the alchemist Yes, but it is to be the alchemist with your emotions and what have you. So, uh, so there are my two programs that I run, sort of, you know, um, once or twice a year, and then uh, one to one, so people can uh, have a one to one with me that I um, really go deep into what it is that they need. You know, I don't have a structure. It's just really some people come to me for business and we work with their business and get them really aligned in their business so that it's just flowing. Other people, it's just personal. It's for themselves uh, that I work with. But usually, even if they're coming for business, you've got to do the personal anyway. Oh, always. You know, I mean, sometimes yeah. I've ended up doing six months personal work with someone before we've even been able to get into yeah. the business structure because yeah. it's like well like we can yeah. but nothing's gonna really change yeah. until we sort this yeah. stuff out yeah it's like looking at the i always dive into like the seven key areas of life yeah. because your business and your finances are never going to be 10 out of 10 That's if your true. relationships are yeah. shocking or you know it's yeah. it's all about that balance isn't it and yeah. stepping back and looking at the bigger picture yeah totally oh. so so I, so I take them through um a few processes of clearing uh and balancing we'll say you know because we hold on to so much crap we really do yes. because i work a lot we're born we're born with a lot of inherited yeah. energy, thoughts, beliefs. Yeah. You, you, we're not working with a clean plate when we no. go, when we arrive, are we? No, definitely not. And it's quite interesting you're saying that because I've I've been asking my spirit team just now uh, for the past few weeks of show me the cellular membrane that I can really reset and put back to default so that all those patterns and and limitations and, and things that we don't no longer need. We keep we keep the energy of the, mm -hmm. the growth, the lessons and what have you, but we change the 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 structure, you know, so that we can and um it's interesting and what I've got coming back 
for that because I'm a bit weird and wonderful or what the, some of the thoughts because I know how powerful we are. We're very, very powerful yeah. people, you know. Well, the message is coming back from that question. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. It's interesting. Watch this space is all oh, She's not going to give it up just yet. <laughs> <laughs> I feel another program coming yeah, on maybe or a book. <laughs> so, so, and I worked with them um, um, three, three months, three months, six months, nine months, 12 months. It's always best. I always think to, for a 12 month uh, because you're really getting really cheap. There's, there's a, a, a right cellular change then. I think, I think if you do the three month, it's just, you just, you'll know yourself when you work with people, you know, the people yeah. think want that quick fix uh, because we're told that they can have that quick fix, but that's not yeah. true. And uh, if you, behind every, um, oh, what do they call it? Well, behind everybody that looks like they instantly get, rich or yes. success or famous or whatever it is they've done years and years and yeah. years of hard slog and learning and whatever it is yeah. self-development they've it's not just happened over no no not at ever all. and you've got to yeah. be consistent this is what where a lot of people fall down they become attached to the outcome and they're not consistent when you're attached to the outcome you are you know, you're really uh, stopping yourself from being the best that you can be. This is the, uh, I was away doing a, a, a speaker's thing at the weekend in Birmingham um, about brand and vision and vibration yeah. and what have you and visibility. And it was really interesting, you know, the, the people when I was doing the talk and I'm saying to them, you know, the, we all, me included, you know, manifestation. Why you're not getting your manifestation? It's because you're attached to the outcome. Yeah. Pure and simple. You're attached to the outcome. You, I, I'll get this if I get that. This will happen if I get this, you know. You have got to have no attachment. You've got to let it completely go. And that's when life does. And how many of us? <gasps> oh, yes. Me included. Me included, you know. Yeah. And a lot of the time we're only doing the thing to get the end result. Yeah. 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 I remember last last summer I was in Italy. And we were climbing some mountains. Yeah. And me and my daughter were getting awfully out of breath compared uh -huh. to the other three people who were marching on ahead, um, getting to the end destination. And and at first we were both slogging up like, oh God, I wish they'd wait for us. And I was like, actually, just stop. Let's just we're so fixed on getting yeah. to the top yeah. that we're not actually enjoying, enjoying it, it well. walk. we're not enjoying it they yeah. can go off and like race to the top that's fine that's what gives them enjoyment yeah. but what gives us enjoyment is looking at all these trees listening yeah. for birds seeing if we can see um little lizards watching the yeah. ants this and that we might take double the time but we're still going to get there but we're going to enjoy the journey yeah um yeah and it is that slowing down isn't it mm -hmm. and connecting to the heart a lot of people they'll maybe connect to the heart but they don't have the the heart mind coherence you know uh, and and you really do need that um that heart mind coherence you know for for especially when you're manifesting especially when you're you're, you're trying to unlock that abundance you know um that we, we all crave because everybody craves abundance somewhere in their life, whether it be monetary uh, relationship, you know, success, yeah. whatever it is, we're all looking for more abundance, you know. But when in fact, in this precise moment, they have everything that they need. Yeah. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So with that in mind, um, what would be your kind of little gem of advice any top tips for the audience things that they can kind of implement today onwards for free yeah. it's about you know if they do it consistently they could make amazing changes what what would it be for you and and where you your journey 
there's a, there's a couple of things I would say. Uh, first of all, have a daily practice. Of of uh, I have a daily practice. If I, as you know, I get an abundance of uh, gorgeous feathers. I mean, yesterday I just got uh, um, on my laptop. I got this black, just sitting on my laptop. You know, this black feather on my laptop. Um, I was just thinking of a feather just like that, yeah. which I've got in my um, in my treatment room, which is normally with the crystals. And today and yesterday, it was under my chair, and I was yeah. like, oh. and and this one was under my pillow <laughs> when I when I got and this I got quite a few yesterday actually, and this one I got um, in my uh, my phone, my wallet, well, my wallet five minutes before it wasn't there and it was there and why I'm mentioning that is because I do a daily practice in my manifestation journal where I get feathers constantly in my manifestation journal do you stick them in are they yeah. stuck in there yeah yeah, yeah just stuck them in. and is this your own um daily journal practice. that you have designed yeah. as well because I recognize the front yes and yeah. the writing yeah, so I, I write this every day, uh, and the reason I designed it is because I couldn't find an exact one of my, my practice that I do. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll put my manifestation choices. What, what, where's your focus? Because mm. a lot of people um, think, oh, I can't manifest that, or I don't know what to do with that. It's because their focus is in completely the wrong place. Their focus is on the lack, and it's not on the actual thing that they want. Yes, so um, it's, it's keeping your focus on the end result, keeping your focus on where it is that you want to go. But also what I do every morning is I tune into my energy. So on a, a scale of one to 10, uh, 10 being really high vibe and one being you're dead, you yeah. know, um, I'll tune into my energy. Where's my energy? Because I understand that your energy vibration has to be at a certain level for you to have uh, manifestations come with these so mm. I'll tune in with my to where my energy is and also I go walking uh, well I go hiking it's not walking it's because it's a bit of a hike uh, by waterfalls and in, in, in the, the forest every morning and whereabouts are you in the UK I'm in Fife I'm just outside Edinburgh so I'm the other you side of the the, um, the the bridges uh, in Edinburgh and where I stay it's you know it's a, it's a beautiful place you know lots of waterfalls and things like that yeah. so I do that also but the, the the main thing is is where your focus is what your daily practice is and where is your energy there's yeah. three main things that you really need to know uh, for you to get your manifestations I mean I've manifested some amazing things absolutely amazing things and still am but yeah. saying that's also I might manifest some shit as well. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yeah. Me too. <laughs> yeah. So so just because I have this abundance of spirit team around me with all these signs that I get, you know, and, and what have you, I still do all the things that you do as well, you know. Yeah. But it's getting that making that awareness of whenever it um comes in, shit, I need to change that. That's my focus mm -hmm. in the place i need to put my focus where and, and as i say I'm, I'm away to live a lifelong dream that i've had since my 20s so 30 odd years i've had this dream of um having no responsibility in my life because all my life i've had responsibility whether it be kids parents jobs um you know um employees whatever it was you know mm -hmm. students i've always had responsibilities and uh, from a very young age and I've always said that when I have the, no responsibilities, I'm going to pack up and just travel and uh, live life out of a backpack, you know. So you're and, going to be one of these uh, laptop entrepreneurs now, aren't yeah, you? Yeah. Travelling traveling the world. Yeah. And I always said after my uh, bridal business that if I was ever, because I, I, I was saying I would never do a business again, but I've tried working for other people. It doesn't work. I can't uh, do it <laughs> when you've worked for yourself for so long, it's just hard to work for someone else. Yeah. And um, and I always said it would be a business that I could take anywhere. Yes. Yeah. And my business, I can I can take it anywhere at all because it's predominantly online now that I work. So I'm hoping to do a, a spiritual retreat when I'm away as well because I know I have the power that's in those 
Um, so I'm going to find a really nice location and uh, maybe Bali or somewhere like that or the Philippines or somewhere yes. like that and do um, get get the, the crowd in. Come on, let's show you what I've found and, and do, because I've done quite a few spiritual retreats in the past, you know. Yeah. And uh, the energy is just always amazing. It really is. Yeah. And for those of uh, for those of you that are listening and you're thinking, oh gosh, I don't live in a beautiful place with waterfalls. I don't um, have the money to go all around the world, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, I remember being in London, living in. I was brought up in South London, lived in South London till I was. I think 39 and I never wanted to live there not as a child you know I, I had my good times I had loads of good times but I yeah. never wanted to live there I didn't feel yeah. it was my place yeah. the countryside was my place or you know yeah. basically being more connected to nature yeah. but that um Oh, I don't have the beautiful spaces. I'm in South London. I'm surrounded by concrete. It, I, I, I got, um, I finally got aware of what I was doing and what I was saying. I was like, gosh, okay, I need to find the beauty that's within South London appreciate it yeah. so when I was going up to London um, I worked in central London at the time I worked in uh, Southwark and London Bridge and Waterloo area so I'd go and I'd be looking up instead of walking looking at the f concrete yeah. floor you know that I would always do I would then start looking up and I'd look up at the buildings and I'd appreciate the buildings and I was like oh, I love the shard Every morning I get a walk to work and I love the shard. Yeah. Instead of walking to work going, oh, I fucking hate it. <laughs> I can't stand this place. Yeah, been there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I shifted it. And it was it was easier to shift at my kind of external yeah. walking about uh, energy than it was when I got in the office because yeah. I was bored out of my head, basically. Um but slowly I got to shift that energy and the way I was thinking, which then eventually yeah. got me moving 100 miles away down to, to Bournemouth, living a life by the sea. I could, you know, I, I'm a mile from the sea. I was dipping in it this morning. I was dipping in it yesterday. So you can, but it's that, that shift and yeah. that awareness of, the curses you're putting on yourself, like I was for years, hate London, don't want to live in it, uh, was stuck there, um, to actually, gosh, there's so much beauty here. I can see this. I can see that. Yeah. And then all of a sudden I was moving. Yeah. 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 No, it's as easy as that. It's just <laughs> the, the shift of perception. It's where your focus is. It's where you put your focus um uh, and a lot of people you know they don't um, they don't realize the words they're actually coming out with because it's habitual you know yeah like, i've done it for the, so long habitual my, myself included i used to go mm -hmm. to work and say, i bloody hate this job but that fuck am i doing in this job and just feel like i just had this imaginary noose around my neck continually yeah instead of actually seeing what I was actually doing for a lot of people, you know, I was making them feel amazing because they were getting beautiful outfits. And, and uh, you know, I was teaching uh, all ages how to really, um, from a piece of paper, how to make a pattern from that and how how to, um, you know, from that sketch they would design and how to make that actual design up from pattern to uh, cutting out two um, thing and all the rest. It was an actual gift, but I didn't see it as a gift, you know. Um, and I didn't really see it as a gift until my uh, my son just got married last year, and his wife, who used to be one of my students actually, oh wow, had, had, um, asked me because I said, "Don't ask me to make your wedding dress, not make your wedding dress." And um, so the bugger asked me. <laughs> And I couldn't say no. It was a position I couldn't say no. And uh, but she actually gave me a gift because I realised um, 
when I was making, she looks stunning, uh, when I was making the outfit, that I absolutely loved making the outfit. It was the people's behaviours around the outfit that I despised. Yes. That's And it was a, a big realisation that she gave me, you know, that she gave me that love back because I absolutely I, I, I adored making it, you know. Don't ask me to do another one, though. Yeah. <laughs> Well, you, know, you got the other son yet? Yeah. <laughs> I'm traveling. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, so yeah. have you got an offer for the wonderful audience? Yeah, um, if they go to um, saa.anvarney.com forward slash abundance, um, or forward slash heart connection. So there's two different things there. So the abundance is unlocking abundance by releasing ancestral curses. Um, and you go along the timeline and, and, and do that. And the heart connection is uh, being able to connect to your spirit team. You know, the because I find uh, being on this path, a lot of people find it difficult to connect to the spirit team or they have their expectations or how they shouldn't be or what have you. Yes. So, and this was given to me by my spirit team of um, a good way of people connecting. Um, and remember, when you're connecting to your spirit team, it's like a muscle. Sometimes you don't get it the first time. Sometimes you don't get it the second time, but it will come. I remember when I was doing me meditation classes and I would get people who had never meditated before and uh, you would see them, you know, everybody would be in the zone and they would just be looking about them. What, what, what's going on, you know? Yeah. Give them two or three uh, times and then they they would be totally in the, and then they would be telling other people that would be coming, you know, just just stay with it, stay with it. Honestly, she's, she's telling you, just stay with it. You won't get it. And, and you would see them eventually get it and when they got it it was you, you'll know yourself it's like wow is that is that what everyone's talking about is that is that it so yeah there's two there so they're free just um sa.annbarney.com uh, forward slash abundance or forward slash heart connection fantastic and if you're watching this on um video rather than listening on the radio then it will be above or below the video as well with all the links um thank you so much you're welcome it's been an absolute pleasure we finally got there we finally got there the stars finally aligned yeah, uh, we finally got there <laughs> Um, yeah, ab absolute pleasure. So remember, you can connect with Anne. Um, you can search annevarney.com and it's saa.annevarney.com and either slash ancestral or slash, what was the other one? So abundance slash abundance, it's the same thing. Yes, know? fantastic. Slash or slash heart connection. Fabulous. Thank you so much. You're uh, welcome. Talking to you as always. Like um, that. and we'll see you on the other side. Yes, totally. Thank you. Bye bye. Stay sane with Jane. The show that helps you and your business to thrive, not just survive. Tune in each week as Jane connects with guests in the wellness, business, and publishing worlds bringing you the most up-to-date training, techniques, healing and guidance for growth, mindset and motivation. Each session includes a magical guided meditation led by Jane or one of her special guests. Here's your host, Jane Scanlon. Hello, gorgeous souls. We are heading into the meditation section now. That's a section that is all about mindfulness and meditation. So thank you for joining us today. My name is Jane Scanlon going to take you on the power of acceptance meditation. I invite you to get comfortable. 
to bring kind awareness as to what this topic um, brings up in your belly, chest and head when you reflect on it. Tune in to the emotions that you associate with these visceral feelings. And bring kind awareness to the positive or negative stories that show up. Find yourself a comfortable seat where you can relax and be relatively free from distractions. Obviously, if you are driving and listening to this, now would not be an appropriate time to practice mindfulness and meditation. And I find a balance between sitting up tall, but remaining relaxed. Feeling into the width of your chest as you soften your shoulders down and back. Rest the arms, face up or down on your thighs. We're in a manner that's the most comfortable. I invite you to close your eyes or gaze low at the ground ahead of you. And breathe in and out through your nose if possible. Choose a breath that reflects all the qualities you desire in your mind. Gentle quiet, patient, steady, spacious, and at ease. Balance your awareness between the three stages of mindfulness. Breathe in and out. These three feet spheres of mindfulness in your body, your breath, and the mind itself. Stay present right here with all three. Seated, breathing, present in the body, mind, and breath. Present. Aware, open, spacious. Now notice what's present here with you. Notice if there's any sensations arising in the body. An energy that you can sense through the breath. Or a movement emotion or habitual thought in the mind. Whatever you have noticed, let it be. And notice if there's any other sensations arise in the body, an energy that you can sense through the breath. Mind. Don't try to change it. Don't chase it. Don't push it away. Can you remain still and spacious in your mind and in your awareness? As you accept what it is that's arising, this is how things are, right here, right now.
recall the acceptance is spacious, non-judgmental and unattached. To attach is not an endorsement. Sorry, to accept is not an endorsement. To accept is not an opinion. And to accept is simply to recognise and to notice. Acceptance is mindfulness and awareness of reality as it is. Now what about now? What's present here with you now? What's arising in the body? What can you sense through the breath? And is there stillness or movement in the mind? How are things? Right here, right now. Notice how it is and accept it. Thanks to your acceptance, there can be a softening. There can be movement. There can be change. This is how things are, right here, right now. Notice, welcome, accept. Sense the whole body, the breath and the mind itself opening into the freedom of acceptance. Nothing needs to be different right now. This is how it is. And from the spaciousness of acceptance, tap into the wisdom that acceptance provides. From the spaciousness of acceptance, from this awareness of how things are. Take a nice deep breath in and shift the back or the shoulders. Coming back into your body, connecting to the wisdom in your body, your breath and the mind. And ask the body itself this question, what should I do now? And be equally accepting of the answer. Coming back into the body, into the environment that you're in, wiggling the fingers and the toes. And this is just a suggestion to write down any messages that came through to you just then. And my name's Jane Scanlon and I look forward to connecting with you next week on Stay Sane with Jane, the radio show that helps you and your business to say sane. Stay Sane with Jane, the show that helps you and your business to thrive, not just survive. Tune in each week as Jane connects with guests in the wellness, business and publishing worlds, bringing you the most up-to-date training, techniques, healing and guidance for growth, mindset and motivation. 
Each session includes a magical guided meditation led by Jane or one of her special guests.